Hi everyone and welcome to our video cast on species. Um, today we're going to look at how um, different species form um, and what are the things that cause that. So um, here we have um, the differences between the 12 giraffe species in Africa. So we're going to answer the question why in this podcast. So why do we have 12 species of gira gira giraffes and how did that happen? What mechanisms were in place that allowed for these different species of giraffes, which are very similar in many ways, but are also very different in many ways? So before we move forward with that, we need to understand the definition of a species. Now we went over this in class so you guys have a really good idea of what a species is. A species is typically a group of individuals within a population that can interbreed and make fertile offspring or viable offspring. In other words, if you are the same species as another member of your population, then you can mate and make babies and your babies can mate and make babies and they can mate and make babies etc okay so the de that is a um, the typical definition of a species okay so um, here we have uh, the general hierarchy of life so they each fit under underneath each other's umbrella kind of so we have um, life being the top um, then it's divided into domains, then kingdoms, phylums, class, order, family, genus, and species. So species, whoa, sorry there. Species is basically the most uh, defined or the smallest uh, taxonomic unit. which means when we take um, all the organisms in life, you can't really get any more specific than a species, okay? So um, that the hard part with that definition of species is that there are some gray areas, okay? So let's talk about some of those gray areas, all right? So here we have really cute picture. Uh, we have a picture of a um, mule. Okay, so to get a mule you take a horse and you made it with a donkey. And the thing about mules is that they are sterile. So by our definition of species Mules cannot mate and make viable offspring. They are sterile. So a mule is technically not a species. Now, a kind of interesting and really super cool story is the story of a tiglon, or sometimes you might have heard it as a tigon. Um, a tiglon is the cross between a male tiger and a female lion, okay? It's kind of like somebody had this really crazy idea one night in the early 1900s, in the 40s actually, and decided to take two really cool super cats and make an even super cat and call it the Tiglon. Um, but it actually happened, it actually happened, and what's interesting is um, these tiglons um, can live to be pretty healthy, um, they're beautiful, um, and typically they're sterile. However, in 1943, um, a tiglon was successfully mated with a lion, lion, tiglon, um, and produced offspring. So Tiglon is definitely, I don't have a gray pen here, but Tiglon is definitely in that gray area of our definition of species, right? Because biology is messy and crazy things can happen. Like 
a tigon, a hybrid between a tiger and a lion, e able to mate with a lion and make viable offspring. Now that offspring, though it had some genetic um, issues, it was um, not super healthy. It did live though to be an adult. So, um, and that happened, there's been several cases where uh, tigons um, have, were fertile and able to reproduce. So, though that definition is most commonly used, it's one that um, there's a lot of um, kind of holes in it that we can see evidence of in, in the world when we observe it. So, I'm going to talk about two different ways that speciation occurs. The first way that I want to talk about, and I'm kind of doing this in outline form. Um, on the website, I showed you my hierarchy of outlines, so if you want to just follow along that, it'll help you organize your notes. So the first type of speciation, so remember speciation is just when one species um, becomes, arises out of a parent species. So there's uh, pressures occurring on that population causing um, a new species to arise. And we're going to talk about different ways that can happen. Um, one of the ways that can happen, speciation can happen, or the creation of new species, is something called allopatric. Speciation. So allopatric speciation, let's break down this word first. So allo, if you guys have studied your word parts, which I recommend you get into, that's incredibly helpful. Allo means different. And Patrick um, means country. Now, I remember it like uh, being patriotic is meaning you have, like, love for your country. So um, speciation occurs from these species being in different countries, or actually a more uh, common word that you can... Um, link this to is geographic isolation. Okay, so an example of this, is, this is a, a really popular um, lab that was done. And we, uh, the lab, it took fruit flies and it separated them, right? So we have some different countries, if the, these could be our different countries here. So um, this is the maltose food country, and this is the starch food country. So what happened is uh, they took a bunch of fruit flies from the same population and divided them up equally and fed them different things for a long time. So these, this, the, the fruit flies in this country ate nothing but maltose-based food. If you remember, maltose is a type of sugar. And... Um, people in this, not people, but flies in this country um, were fed nothing but starch food. And many, many, many generations passed and um, there became subtle differences genetically within the two different countries, right? So we can say that this um, gene flow has decreased, right? So we have a decreased gene flow, and we have these small genetic variances with, between the two countries, right, or the, two, the separate fruit fly populations. Now, when the fruit flies were reunited, it was found that fruit flies from the same countries or the same um, re-individual populations um, tended to mate more with each other. So in other words, the maltose flies mated with maltose flies and the starch food flies only mated with starch food flies. So this um, this gave rise to uh, many different things but the the biggest thing that caused their um, speciation or caused their genetic differences was the fact that they were separated, separated fed different food and then um, 
they preferred mates from their same country. So that's an example of allopatric speciation. Another really simple example would be if you have a lake, a giant lake, and you have one type of species of fish, and all of a sudden the lake dries up, and now you have, um, instead of one big lake, you have two small lakes, and you've decreased this gene flow um, between the two small lakes, and slowly, um, after many, many generations, one uh, group of fish in a lake starts to look a, a little bit different than the other group of fish in the other lake because they only have each other's, they only have the genes within their own little lake and not the genes within the giant lake. So I think you guys understand that concept pretty well. The next type of speciation I want to talk about is a little more complicated. So this is number two. Uh, this is called sympatric speciation. Now we're going to be talking about sympatric speciation for a bit, actually. So sympatric speciation. So sympatric speciation, let's break the word down. We've got sim. This means same. Okay. Patrick, we know that means country. So a Sympatric speciation is speciation that occurs within organisms that live in the same country. In other words, there's no geographic barrier, there's no geographic um, separation. And what this ultimately causes, um, that we're going to be looking at in sympatric speciation, is a reproductive barrier. Now here's a very simple diagram of sympatric speciation here. If this um, green blob represented our um, entire population. And then over time, we start to see this little yellow blob um, within the green blob, which represents a genetic polymorphism. Now that's just a difference. Um, a, a small subpopulation has a, a very different allele frequency patterns, okay? Then that polymorphism becomes stronger and stronger, and eventually you get um, two different species living in the same area. So before we head into that um, details on sympatric speciation, we got to do a quick review on... Um, haploid versus diploid, okay? So um, all of your somatic cells, they all are diploid, which means they have two sets of chromosomes. So in humans, we have um, 23 chromosomes, and we have two sets. So that gives us a total of 46 chromosomes, okay? So all of our somatic cells, these are our skin cells, the cells in your stomach, every cell in your body. The only cell that doesn't account for is our cells that are actually haploid, and these are our gametes, and our gametes are our sperm and our egg. So the reason our gametes are haploid is for sexual reproduction, right? Because our haploid egg or our haploid sperm is going to combine with another haploid egg or haploid sperm and create diploid, which gives your offspring more genetic variation. So um, the whole purpose of meiosis, I know that word might um, be long gone in terms of its definition in your mind, but the whole purpose of meiosis is to take these diploid cells and reduce the amount of genetic information in half so that it can be combined with another haploid cell to make uh, a more varied, variated diploid cell. So um, the only, what I want to look at though here is when there are mistakes in meiosis, right? Meiosis is not perfect, and biology is not perfect, and it's messy. And sometimes we get something which is um, a little sub part of our sympatric speci speciation. Um, you get something called polyploidy. 
which means you have, if you know your word parts, poly means many. And ploidy just has to do with the number of chromosomes. So haploid, I always think haploid, half the chromosomes. Diploid, di means two. Um, poly just means you have many sets of chromosomes. Let's take a little bit deeper on that and um, look at how exactly that happens. So once again, we're looking at polyploidy. Now, this right here shows the normal path. So um, this is a diploid parent. So they have two copies of each chromosome. So there's one, one right there, one right there. So there's two, two copies, two copies. Um, meiosis is undergone right here. And we make haploid gametes. So they only have one copy of each chromosome. So here we have our haploid gametes, right? So let's say that's the dad everything looks normal for the dad, right? So let's say the mom's got a little bit of craziness going on. So what happens is um, a tetrapoid parent, um, or we could say it generally is a polyploid because it has many copies, um, has four copies of each chromosome. So it goes through my meiosis and actually makes diploid gametes, okay? So there's a mistake, there is a mistake that happened to create this and it caused only diploid gametes. So now their babies are actually um, triploid, right? They've got three sets, okay? So when meiosis is undergone for them, you have all these weird, uneven um, gametes, right? Some of them have two, some of them have one. And when um, fertilization happens, a lot of times the genetic material can't be transferred because it, it simply doesn't match up. So polyploidy um, is a way, it's, it's actually a um, prezygotic barrier, oops, excuse me, a prezygotic barrier, um, which we're going to talk about later, that causes speciation, okay? So... Um, put a definition up there, or polyploidy is an accident in meiosis that causes the offspring to receive um, an extra set of chromosomes. So we go um, from 2N, so m normally you would have two sets of chromosomes, to maybe having 4N, which would be four sets of chromosomes, okay? So this is ultimately causing a reproductive barrier. Now, there are two types of polyploidy. Um, the first type, um, the potato is famous for, um, is autopolyploidy. Ploidy, there we go. So auto means self. So the reason that it has many sets of chromosomes is because of itself. So what happens this it, with autopolyploidy is basically there are two sets of chromosomes. I'm going to abbreviate chromosomes um, that come from parents of the same species. That's where this word self comes in. So parents of the same species. So from same species parents. Okay, so autopolyploidy self, same, same, the parents are the same species, okay? So what happens is, yes, this usually creates a infertile offspring, so that offspring, um, there's their seed or um, their gametes are not viable, but they're able to reproduce asexually, which means they're able to reproduce on their own. They don't need any sort of fertilization. Um, scientists actually believe that 80% um, of plant species came to be by autopolyploidy. So once again, autopolyploidy is when you have two sets of chromosomes from the same species. So you're looking at something that might be a 4N. Um, and the, the parents are the same. The 
offspring is sterile, however, it can reproduce asexually, okay? So that's what our superstar potato is. Next time you make mashed potatoes, you can say, I would like mashed autopolyploids with butter, please. And you will sound really cool, I promise. Um, so this would be uh, I for our uh, outlining purposes. Next, what I'd like to talk about is um, we've seen auto, so now we're obviously going to see allo. So allo polyploidy. Now allo, we know this from allopatric, means different. So I want you to th link it again to the parents. So in an allo polyploidy organism, there are different parents. So it's essentially a hybrid. Right? So what happens is you have parent A and you have parent B and they create a hybrid, we'll call it A plus B. Now hybrids are usually sterile, right? Um, but somewhere along the way, some random my, myotically, myotic mistake, basically, basically um, this um, hybrid right here, this guy right here, the hybrid becomes fertile. Okay, so now that this hybrid is fertile, it's like, hey, I'm ready to go make babies, right? So what happens is the thing with allopolyploides is they can't make babies. They can't produce offspring with any of the parent species. However, if it finds another hybrid, right, a combination of the parent species, they can mate. This is my little mating sign. There we go. That's them mating. <laughs> um, they can mate and produce other hybrid offspring. So they can make many offspring that are A, B hybrids. So once again, on allopolyploidy, the hybrid offspring of two different, remember allo means different, offspring can um, mate with, uh, is infertile, but becomes fertile and can only mate with other hybrids. Um, an example of this, and that's the background of our image, is wheat. So um, wheat is a combination, it's actually a, um, Allo, different, right? Hexa means six, and ploid. Okay, so next time you want wheat bread, you can say I'll have allo hexaploid bread. And once again, you'll sound really cool. Maybe you can have it with your, um, your auto polyploid uh, mashed potatoes, right? So um, what happens with wheat is wheat has um, three parent species. Um, so you have AA, BB, and DD, and they all contribute to alleles. So you have, or not two alleles, but two uh, sets of chromosomes. So if you have two sets of chromosomes times three species, you're going to be a six set or a hexaploid, okay? So um, there we go, we got wheat, allo hexaploid. All right, so that would be our, um, our under our II as well. Okay, let's take a look and um, at some things that might cause speciation that aren't caused by ploidy. Right, that don't have anything to do with the number of um, chromosomes and, and gametes. Um, so this would be B. Um, what I would like to talk about here is what you guys actually already know about is habitat differentiation. Now you know the poster child of this is um, Darwin's finches on the Galapagos Islands. And basically what happened here is a phenomenon called adaptive radiation. 
And the, the key word here, or the key mechanism here is natural selection, is the acting force. And basically, a subpopulation of a species um, evolves away or mutates away to exploit a food source or a habitat that the parent species does not, cannot use. So that would be the definition um, of what we mean by habitat differentiation, is a subpopulation can exploit food or habitat that the parent population cannot. And that ultimately creates a um, sympatric speciation. Uh, the last thing I'd like to talk about is sexual selection, right? It's biology. We always have to talk about sex. So sexual selection. And this is when mate choice morphs allele frequencies within a population. So maybe there's some specific mating mechanisms that are, are the norm within a population. Um, and there can be a subpopulation within that group that um, responds differently to different sexy indicators, okay? So um, with this, I would like you, there's a link at the bottom of this video, uh, to read um, this article online, and you'll see the link below, on how sexual selection created two different cichlid species in Africa. So that is our vodcast on speciation. I hope you enjoyed and study hard.